Hello and welcome back to the UK edition this Valentine's weekend. It's the time of the year when adults sit under red balloons and say things they probably don't mean. But should we ignore the day for that reason? Is it un-Indian? We have a word on that in just a bit with Mr. Vijay Jolly, BJP leader, and he has something to say about this. But before that, this isn't the only annual day or anniversary around. Someone came to Britain a year ago, not sure who's celebrating, certainly not the Indian government. After all those lookout notices, government agencies were looking the other way when Vijay Malia left or was allowed to leave India to take a commercial flight to London. He came with bag and baggage, loads of it, preparing clearly for a long stay. And so it has turned out to be, despite all his early statements about an intention to return. We looked for him down at his London home next to the Madame Tussauds Wax Museum and finally tracked him down to his countryside estate north of London, where he was and is staying despite his tweets that the media were looking for him in the wrong place. In the recent past, there have been instances of big-time offenders, including economic offenders, fleeing the country. A political storm followed Malia's departure and has still not blown over. Network 18 dug out several reports of steps taken by the earlier government headed by the Congress to protect him. Though it was in BJP government days that he finally fled. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley announced an intention to get after him. But that intention has got nowhere. An Indian government appeal to the UK government to have Malia deported was turned down embarrassingly because it was not valid within law. Through his stay, he spoke to the Financial Times looking to present his case and has surfaced here and there from time to time, but enough to show he is living the grand style he is accustomed to. He was seen at the Ascot races of My Fair Lady fame. He turned up at the F1 races to back his team. And he has been living it up at his country home and around Britain, though he is barred from leaving the United Kingdom. The Malia story is far from over and nobody knows where it will end. But going by the sign so far, he is not likely to end up in a prison in India where the Indian authorities now want him. Looking at some more dates in the calendar, it was December 2012, remember, when that terrible rape and killing took place in Delhi. It shook everyone up. But since then, has anything got safer and better for women in India? A quick word on that with Vrinda Grover, a tireless campaigner for human rights in India. She was in London to deliver the Noor Inayat Khan Memorial Lecture. The first annual lecture was held in London to honour Noor Inayat Khan, who spied for the British behind enemy lines in Germany in World War II and who was later caught and killed. The lecture was delivered by human rights activist Brinda Grover at the School of Oriental and African Studies in London to honour the spirit of liberty that Noor lived by and died for. I think women have seized the opportunity to make sure that they are not pushed back again. And they are therefore speaking out against the sexual violence. They are demanding that sexual violence be made accountable. They are not only moving courts of law, but they're also asserting their rights. And they're saying we're going to live as free citizens, as equal citizens. Don't tell us that for your safety, you need to go back. And I see this actually happening, particularly amongst young women across classes. It's not something that's peculiar to urban India or to the educated class. In so far as uh, the issue of sexual violence, as we know, uh, it occurs everywhere at all times. But uh, I think the notions of shame and the silencing that accompanied it, even within conservative communities, we see that breaking down. At least the beginnings of it are there. The lecture was seen as an expression of the spirit and principles of Noor Inayat Khan. I think it was Noor's last words, which were liberté. And they have always been an inspiration for me, because whatever it is, you've got to have hope. And even when she was being killed, she shouted out for freedom and liberty. And so we've called the series the Liberty Series. This is the first lecture that we had. We needed to talk about freedoms, which are all under pressure at the moment. And we're going to see how it evolves in the future years. I think 
Catherine, from today, the response was tremendous. Rinda was absolutely marvelous. I feel breathless, you know, having heard what she told us today. So I think this is going to go on. It'll be in the spirit of Noor, various speakers talking about various things. With Sanjay Suri in London, this is Vebha Varma for News 18. And now for those controversial red roses after a very short break. Every day which generates uh, compassion, every day which uh, consolidates the society, every day which uh, gives a feeling of bonhomie to a mother, to a father, to a wife, to a beloved, to a sister, to a bhabi, and also to my neighbor, whether he is a male or a female. I'm bound to celebrate that every day. Welcome back. This is, of course, the Valentine's weekend, and we are joined most appropriately by Mr. Vijay Jolly from the BJP. Jolly ji, happy Valentine's. Aapko Valentine Divas ki bahut bahut shubh kamnaye. We won't ask who is your Valentine, but how are you celebrating? Well, in India, we celebrate every month and every day. Whether it is Basant Panchmi, whether it is Holi, whether it is uh, Besaki, but of course not Valentine. Though my wife is my Valentine and she is my beloved too. Right, but is this day special for you? Well, you see, every day in India is special. India... Well, we can't say every day is Diwali. Of course, every day is special, but every day is not Diwali. Every day is not New Year's Day. There's something about this day and there are there's something about particular days in the year people pick on to celebrate, of course. What is it about this day? Are you doing something in red, well, let's say? we consider Valentine to be alien to the Indian traditions. Valentine does not coincide with the Indian traditional and seasonal celebrations. Of course, uh, the younger generation is madly and blindly following it since we consider it to be a highly commercialized uh, occasion. Business to the tune. Why do you say madly and blindly? Why do you say madly and blindly? Maybe just happily. Well, I say madly and blindly because uh, in India, every season denotes a certain degree of uh, affection, love, regard for one's parents, for one's society, for one's colleagues, and of course for one's uh, beloved at heart. For us, Valentine does not mean much. For us, of course, Basant Panchmi, the advent of uh, the new season, the colorful season of uh, flowers, the end of the severe winters, the holy which again denotes uh, the exchange of colors. These are not individualistic uh, well, uh, festivals. These festivals denote Valentine's the consolidation of the Indian not... society and a cultural heritage. Of course, uh, Valentine would be followed uh, by one segment of the society in India or blindly followed all over the Western nations. I'm not supposed to follow the things blindly. I have to apply my own head and heart to every occasion which I wish to celebrate. Well, talking timing, Valentine's is not that far from Basant Panchami and it's a way of saying it with flowers. So isn't that a way of blending a uh, Western tradition with an Indian tradition? You see, I would uh, here wish to state and tell your viewers at large. 7th February is uh, celebrated as a Rose Day. 8th February is celebrated as a Proposal Day. 9th February is celebrated as a Chocolate Day. 10th February is celebrated as a Teddy Day. 11th February is uh, celebrated as a Kiss Day. 12th February, of we course, is celebrated on on, uh, as a Valentine's Day. These all celebrations and, and have a commercial similarly. bearing. A commercial bearing which means to the tunes of billions of dollars, uh, they, they uh, promote business interest. They uh, promote uh, uh, those concepts which are alien to me as a true Indian, to the 
traditional Indian well, season. Uh, you know, there are, as you were saying, Vijay ji, there are days and days and every day can be a chocolate day for many people. But you know, uh, we're talking of Valentine's. It is a Western tradition. Do we speak of these things as alien anymore? Isn't there a more of a free flow around the world of influences and openness to other ways and other things that are just fun? It might be fun for some. It might be exciting for some uh, friends and colleagues of mine. We don't have any objection to that. In the party? I think uh, within the party and outside the party, we have a very liberal approach. People who don't uh, agree with us, we try to reason out with them. We tell them uh, the reasons of uh, um, not agreeing to the concepts. So I would rather say, we have got no opposition to anyone following their own beliefs and uh, comforts. But of course, we consider it to be alien to the Indian traditions and the Indian way of life. But the word alien itself is becoming a little outdated, Vijayji. Now, uh, here in Britain, of course, there are parties on the weekend and parties on Valentine's Day itself. And this now is becoming more and more popular in India. Is this just another facet of globalization? You see, if I don't agree with the Valentine concept, and I'm termed as outmoded or outdated, I would certainly object to that. I'm well-read, I'm well-educated, I've uh, traveled around 84 countries of the world. I have the Western friends as well as the Indian friends. We do uh, business with the Western friends, but it is not necessary that uh, we agree with them on every concept of uh, how the society has to be consolidated. And of course, Valentine is an individualistic uh, uh, festival or an individualistic occasion where one individual expresses his or her affection, love, or passion for the other soul. What we firmly believe is every day which generates uh, compassion, every day which uh, consolidates the society, every day which uh, gives a feeling of bonhomie to a mother, to a father, to a wife, to a beloved, to a sister, to a bhabi, and also to my neighbor, whether he is a male or a female, I am bound to celebrate that every day of the year and not only wait for a particular 12th of February to express my feelings of gratitude towards uh, whom I have great respect and regard. But is there something particular about Valentine's that you have a little difficulty with? For example, this insistence on red, red flowers, red balloons to sit under, red clothes to wear, even red laundry to wear. Is this kind of suggestion, do you think, offensive or acceptable? You see, why the red only? Why not the pink? This is a commercialized concept and... Uh, well, that's the festival. That's the way, that's the, way the tradition You see, developed. if uh, I wear a saffron tie and a saffron handkerchief, and to term me as a, not a moderate, will not be doing justice with the concept. Of course, uh, people who love red, they see the red. I see the saffron and I promote the saffron. Yeah, but Valentine's is not really political. Saffron is political. I don't agree with that. It is the feelings from the heart. Well, well uh, colors apart, you were speaking about commercialization, but isn't Diwali now commercialized? Isn't Christmas commercialized? Isn't that just the way the world is? Not ideal, but the you, way it you is? You cannot uh, compare the religious festival of Diwali and Christmas uh, with Valentine. Those festivals uh, are not commercialized uh, oriented. They have certain ethos. They have certain message uh, for the younger generation, how compassion works, how deliverance works, how sacrifices work, which are denoted, of course, by Christmas. I do celebrate Christmas with my Christian friends. And my Christian and Muslim friends uh, do celebrate Diwali with me because they certainly give a certain degree of message of good governance and Ram Rajya all over the world. And I would rather say, in India we say, with the advent of uh, the month of uh, February, which denotes uh, uh, the arrival of the Basant Ritu, Basant Aya, or Sardi Gai, the winters are gone. Valentine does not give me that uh, warmth in my society.
in my circle and in the environment which I live. I have got no objection to the people who follow Valentine in their own way. But you know, we are speaking really of the young and the young mean not just young in age, but some of the allegedly older people who are really young at heart and who go out to celebrate. Isn't there a new wave of youth culture that is now common across Britain, the US, India, and many of these 84 countries you've visited? Yes, I do agree. The young people are brash, they're intelligent, they're progressive, and they're in a hurry also. They ape uh, the things very fast. They learn the things very fast. Are they in a hurry to love you think? Well, I think the younger generation does denote a youth in hurry. Nothing bad about it. But f aping, in but love aping the Western uh, traditions and uh, without applying your mind, at least Vijay Jolly from India. Vijay Jolly, who has been the president of the Delhi University Students' Union, people who are first raters. I happen to be from a college uh, called Shiraram College of Commerce today, where the last percentage is 98 percent. And still, if I hold my beliefs firmly, I should not be termed as someone outdated in this mad rush to celebrate and be a part of the Valentine. I wish all the Valentines celebrating youngsters best of luck, but also would appeal to them, see out the truth and follow the Indian but traditions. We are speaking also. finally, for, just, just, just one last quick word Vijayji. Um, we are speaking about uh, Valentine's as a possibly alien culture, but if you can stay within your own culture and also embrace something from outside, what's wrong? India has always done that. Well, I'm not saying anything is wrong in that. I'm not saying that we are opposing them uh, physically, but emotionally to follow one's own beliefs is one's own right. If I'm a true Hindu, I'm proud to be a Hindu and so would be a Christian uh, brother or a Muslim brother uh, all across the globe. If we consider Valentine to be an individualistic uh, celebration between two people, I would not be out of tune to state that Valentine is a Western concept. Yes, agreed. But there have been some growing protests in India against Valentine's. It's not just a question of letting people be. You see, I, I did uh, state at the initial beginning of this interview, the youngsters are in a hurry. They are blindly and madly following the Western concepts. But ultimately, it is the Indian festivals which are celebrated all through the year, right from February till November. They don't wait for a single day. Every day is born hemi. Every day is uh, um, reaching out to every segment of the society and a society in whose rich cultural, traditional, historical heritage we are very proud about. And do you know? Well, do you know that uh, how this Valentine Day uh, started to be celebrated? It has got nothing to do. Well, I mean, it has got are, nothing yes, to do no, are, with chocolates. It has got nothing to do with the red uh, buntings. It is all about torture, arrest. Saint Valentine, during the third century, well, uh, Vijayji, when he, Vijayji, when he, when he, when he opposed the, the Roman uh, Empire, a Roman Empire which always said unmarried soldiers perform better than married soldier. It was a Saint Valentine who started secret, uh, secretly uh, solemnizing the marriages. Of course. He was arrested, true, he was true, uh, tortured, those were, those and he was hanged. But it was only in the 5th century that the Roman church decided to confer martyrdom on St. Valentine. And this uh, day started off. So please understand. True. If the uh, Vijayji, roots, Vijayji, you have has, to understand the this roots. This festival had certain origins, yes. We, we accept that this had certain origins going way back. Today it has developed into a different form. We were speaking about the festival as it is currently marked and observed. But thank you very much Vijayji for talking to us. You did say that uh, people are following this tradition blindly and madly, but let's also not forget that it's the dumb thing to believe that love is blind and 
to be madly in love, but not everything uh, is a matter we all agree on. Thank you very much again, Vijayji, for talking to us. Thank you. Mr. Jolly is right. You can't love for just one day. It has to be every day, just as we are here with you on News 18.